Grandpa Bill, Grandpa Bill, story time with Grandpa Bill. It's Grandpa Bill's story time. Yay! Hi, I'm Grandpa Bill. Welcome to Grandpa Bill's story time. Come on in, make yourself comfortable, and we're going to sit down and read a good book. Okay, our story today is uh, The Magic School Bus Blows Its Top. A book about volcanoes. Ooh, this sounds fun. It's always an adventure on the magic school bus. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Good morning, class. It started like any ordinary day in Miss Frizzle's class, but that doesn't mean much. There aren't any ordinary days in Miss Frizzle's class. Yeah, that's true. That morning we were trying to put together an enormous globe, but we didn't have all the pieces, so the whole thing fell apart. Carlos, said Dorothy Ann, her nose in, nose in the instruction book, if you spent more time on research, you, you would know how to put the globe together. Carlos dusted himself off. And if you didn't spend so much time doing research, you could have helped, he answered. We never broke the world at my school. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're trying to make a globe when it, something happened. Miss Frizzle looked over the mess. I'm afraid you can't put that globe together until you have all the pieces, she told us. You see, there is an island so new it hasn't been discovered yet. How can there be a new island? asked Phoebe. The earth never changes, does it? The earth is changing all the time, said Miss Frizzle right under your very feet. We all looked down at our feet, but nothing was moving. What's the island's name? She says, how can it have a name? It hasn't even been discovered. Mm -hmm. We're gonna find out. The magic school bus began to spin and stretch and pull. The next thing we knew, we were high in the air. Ooh, we'll name it Carlos Island. Forget it. How about Dorothy Ann Island? <laughs> Hang Tan Bus. Ah, oh no. Soon we were flying over the ocean. The sky grew dark. It big black clouds floated past. The island should have arrived any minute now, announced Miss Frizzle. How can an island just arrive? We wondered. But then thunder boomed and lightning streaked across the sky. The ocean beneath us bubbled like a pot of boiling water. From out of nowhere, a blanket of dark ash covered our windows. Prepare to land, shouted Miss Frizzle. Oh boy, something's going on. Look at this. The bus grew surfboard pontoons, and we surfed to a, a stop right on top of the water. We all climbed off the bus. There was no land anywhere in sight, but Miss Frizzle had an inflatable life raft. Carlos jumped in first. Splash! A big wave washed over the pontoon sending Dorothy Ann's book bag flying out to sea. I need my books to find that island, wailed Dorothy Ann as the books sank. We have to get them. Please, Miss Frizzle, please. Couldn't we just go to a bookstore? <laughs> Here they are on all the floaty pontoons and stuff. Ooh, look like a submarine. Of course, we'll get them, agreed Miss Frizzle. Prepare to dive, class. Everyone climb back onto the bus then the frizz pressed a button and the magic school bus twisted into a submarine. <coughs> Carlos decided to stay on the raft. He wanted to be the first to spot the new island. Arnold stayed too, but for another reason. He'd already had enough of our field trips. My certified teaching lizard will keep an eye on you. <coughs> so funny. Oh boy, gotta turn the book sideways here. Let's see, how does this go? Oh. We waved goodbye while Carlos, Arnold, and Liz bungled up their life jackets. Batten down the hatches, the frizz called loudly, and down and down and down we went. There they are, way down here. <coughs> Step on it, please, Miss Frizzle. Bottoms up. Wow, we couldn't believe what we saw. A huge underwater mountain. Dorothy Ann spotted her book bag right away. It floated past the window on its way to the ocean floor and landed next to an old shipwreck. There it is. <coughs> wow. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> They're going deep in the ocean. 
He says, can I get a burger to go with that shake? We're in trouble now. The bus scrunched up tight, then it shot out like a cannon. Good thing we had on special diving suits. Dorothy Ann swam over to her book bag, but the strap was looped around the tentacle of a great giant squid. Ah, Dorothy Ann screamed. The squid was swimming away. It's got my bag. Just then the ocean floor began to tremble. Brrr. The ship started to shake and we heard a loud rumbling noise. Earthquake! We were so surprised. We didn't even see Dorothy Ann's book bag when it floated past, pushed upward by the gas bubbles. The bubbles floated to the top of the sea. Pop! The bubbles burst, letting out a terrible smell. Look, cried Carlos as he snatched up Dorothy Ann's book bag. Maybe we could find out what's going on by reading Dorothy Ann's books. Mm, P.U. I guess it's stinky. Ooh, smells bad. Uh, she says, hmm, something must heat those chimneys out from underneath. He says, ha ha. Meanwhile, the frizz was trying to cheer up Dorothy Ann. There's more than one way to discover an island, she said brightly. So we all dived deeper into the ocean. Brr, it was getting cold. Even the bus shivered. Then we noticed something strange. There were funny looking chimneys in the ground and they were warm. Phoebe poked her head in close and poof, got a face full of soot. Oh, goodness. Keisha swam over to a deep canyon in the ocean floor. It was shaped like a V. Maybe DA's books fell down the air, she said. There's only one way to find out, said Miss Frizzle. We swam back to the bus and soon we were heading down into the canyon. Ooh. Down, down, down. But there's no space for us down here. Smashing observation, Tim. <laughs> rumble, rumble, another earthquake hit. <sighs> At the bottom of the canyon, the rocky floor began to slide right underneath another plate. Above us, above us, the ocean waves grew rougher, but Carlos barely noticed. He was too busy reading. There he is. He says right here, the Earth's surface is made up of layered crust-like plates of rocks that fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. He told Arnold, these plates move very, very slowly, but sometimes one plate slides under another one. When it slides, we actually uh, feel the earth move. That's what the canyon was, two giant plates of rock. They were sliding together, creating an earthquake and leave it to Miss Frizzle to squeeze us right between them. Carlos, you sure sound like Dorothy Ann because <laughs> he's reading the books. The magic scuba shuddered and groaned and grunted. It stretched like a long, thin rubber band, and so did we. As one plate shoved under the other, we squeezed in between. Now we oozed through hot, swirling liquid deep beneath the earth. It's so hot, said Keisha, fanning herself. The rocks and the crust are melting. Melted rock is called magma, explained Miss Frizzle. Magma, what a great word. What's wrong with rock juice? Gah. Look at the rock getting stretched. Dorothy Ann wrinkled her nose. She was trying to figure it all out. She remembered the chimneys and the heat under the ocean floor. The earthquakes and the mountains were under, and were under an underwater volcano, she shouted. Geysers shot up to the sky. Water hissed all around the raft. The rumbling noise grew louder and Carlos waved his book excitedly. He figured out the very same thing. Bingo, Dorothy Ann, and you figured it out by yourself. According to my research, we're floating above a volcano. Oh, boy. Under the volcano, the magma pushed us up, up, up. Soon we were rising up into a big blob of boiling hot bubbles. Welcome to Magna Chamber, said Miss Frizzo, grandly. <coughs> the heart of the volcano. The pressure grew stronger and stronger. The magma rose higher. Ralphie gumped. How do we get out of here, he asked. Out of the volcano, Miss Frizzo repeated. How do you suppose? We're going to get blown sky high. <coughs> Excuse me, Dorothy Ann was too excited to be scared. When all this magma shoots up and hits the air, it will cool down. Right, right, she asked Miss Frizzo. Absolutely, said Miss Frizzo. And when it cools, it will harden into rock. Eventually, Miss Frizzo agreed, and the new rock will build up on top of this volcano. Dorothy Ann continued, until it sticks out of the water, it will be a brand new island. Yes, shouted Miss Frizzle. Hmm, that's how the islands are made. Yes, we have to get up to push and get melted. <laughs> there they are inside the volcano. 
Just then we shot up through the bubbling magma like a rocket ship, higher and higher, closer to the top. Clove! We jolted to a stop. Oh no, cried Dorothy Ann. We've stopped rising. Something must be plugged up at the volcano, said Kisip, and magma squeezing us, Phoebe exclaimed. Carlos had no idea we were such a tight spot. He still had his head buried in Dorothy Ann's books. A lot of stuff has blown out of the volcano when it erupts, he told Arnold. Volcanic ash and dust and rocks. Just then, volcanic ash and dust and rocks rained down and then lava. Carlos finished triumphantly, but it all together, put it all together and you get out of here, Arnold exclaimed in a panic. No, Carlos corrected. You get Carlos Island. It will be a whole island named after me. Oh, start paddling fast. Get out of the way. It's coming up. I can't stand this. Don't let the pressure get to you. It's really ready to blow. Meanwhile, we jumped into our anti-magma gear and were pushing the plug with all of our might, but it wouldn't budge. Then when Miss Frizzle and Magic School Bus went into action, they rammed the plug again and again. Kapow! The plug popped out. The magma boiled into glowing clouds of ash and rock. Then it all billowed out with a rush of steam. What a sight. Red hot lava poured down inside to the volcano. The volcano grew bigger and bigger. It was an island. Wow, there they go. <whistles> wow. We we landed plop into the raft. Then the volcano belched one last time and the magic school bus whooshed into the air. There it is. A parachute opened and the bus drifted down to a soft landing on the water. Oh my goodness. To Carlos Island, said Carlos, as we rode over to the brand new land island. I discovered it with the help of Dorothy Ann's books. Carlos Island? You mean Dorothy Ann Island, Dorothy Ann corrected. I discovered it, and for once, I didn't need my books. But someone else had landed there first. Liz. Ah, they're a lizard. First one on the island. <laughs> He's got to name it after him. <laughs> So when Carlos and Dorothy Ann decided to write a book about their experiences, they knew exactly what to call it. Lizard Island by Carlos and Dorothy Ann, said Carlos. Don't you mean Lizard Island by Dorothy Ann and Carlos, said Dorothy Ann. Carlos and Dorothy Ann. Dorothy Ann and Carlos. Oh, they're arguing. <laughs> Letters to Dorothy Ann and Carlos from Lizard Island readers. Dear Carlos, my school bus never surfs, dives, stretches, or flies. And I can't believe yours does either. Very truly yours, two feet on the ground. Dear Carlos, I thought your book was a blast, but according to my research, it takes a lot longer than a few minutes for a volcano to grow from an undersea mountain into an island. Also, I don't think you should go wandering around inside a volcano, hang around one when it is erupting, or walk on lava right after the eruption. That would be too dangerous. All my lava, Ian Rumpson. Dear Dorothy Ann, where did you buy your book bag? You obviously had the, the latest in waterproof accessories. Signed, your shopping friend. Go. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. What a great adventure. Volcanoes that turn into islands. It's always fun on the Magic School Bus. Thank you for sharing this book with me today. Come back again for more stories with Grandpa Bell. Goodbye. <laughs>